Hello, I'm Dr. Basil Considine. I'm here from the ACU Online Writing Center, and today we're going to talk about how to craft an effective video statement. This is one of our hyper-focused webinars, so if you're looking at the slide deck for it, you'll see a couple informational slides about Writing Center services that we'll include for the sake of reference and completeness, but we're going to dive right into our task here. Now, it happens that the particular assignment that we're looking at is drawn from the FAMO program, and if you want to look at our other webinars that tie in with that, just head on to our Writing Webinars page, link on the screen right now. And if you scroll down past the schedule, you'll see a tabbed guide here. And if you click on FAMO, F-A-M-O, you'll see sorted by course number all of the webinars that we have that tie in with that course and in particular assignments. With that, let's go ahead and dive in because we're going to be talking about FAMO 280's week four assignment number one, the positive sexual decision-making assignment, which requires that you make a video statement. Now we'll be using that as the catalyst, but the purpose, the application, the principles that we'll be talking about today can be used in any sort of video presentation that you're doing. So let's take a look at the instructions for this assignment. This is coming from the Child Development Ages 12 to 18 course, and it begins with a brief preamble. After completing this assignment, students should have a stronger grasp of the key elements that need to be included in strategies intended to foster positive sexual decision making. And we have a little bit of context for the presentation in the instructions. Gender and sexuality are emotionally charged topics. In this module, you have read and watched videos from perspectives that probably affirmed and challenged your previous thinking. Based on what you have read and watched, and on what you have brought with you to this class, you will record a video identifying elements that should be involved in educational outreach strategies to adolescents regarding sexuality. Your video should be four to five minutes long. And so we have some detailed instructions about what you should be using here. Um, identifying a specific setting that you'd like to work in and a population that you are you would like to work with here for your educational outreach here two specific goals for that and five elements or best practices regarding content or supportive elements that should be included that would specifically address your goals and then you should be supporting that with current research theory references to various materials potentially including scripture uh, but that scripture should not be the only a source that you're relying on. Uh, so that those last two sentences, I would say, read that as you can use it, but it should be something that supplements your argument, not be the whole foundation for it. And then you can use Canvas Studio or other tools to make. And so if we look at the rubric for this assignment, it is basically saying, hey, do all those things that we mentioned. And you can see that uh, about 9% of the grade is is it within the specified range and does it communicate clearly in both visual and audio so we'll come back to that but those first three things about the contents that's basically going through the list of the instructions saying hey do you, have you stated your goals clearly have you identified the, the practices and then have you supported them and note that the elements are supported with has equal weight that is a whole third of the point it's 33 percent goes to have you supported those five elements well separate from listing those five elements or best practices itself so definitely you want to make sure that that's explicitly clear so let's bridge from that into talking about some principles for strong video statements and then we'll go back and talk about how these two might intersect how you might practice these principles when looking at the assignment so to start off, some key principles for a good video presentation. First, orient the viewer. Tell them what you're talking about. Perhaps what is inspiring this. If you watch, say, a YouTube video reviewer, they usually start with saying, hey, I'm so-and-so and I am reviewing this movie, or I saw this movie and here are my thoughts, or something like that. And if you have watched anything like this, I'm sure you have some favorites. Some people where you like what they do, and some people where you're like, skip, skip, skip. Okay, here's the good stuff that I'm here for. So look at the different introductions that appeal to you. And they're probably appealing to you because there's something that helps orient you in a way that you like. Keep it simple. Yeah, don't give us a whole long preamble before you tell us what's going on. You don't need to have something very visually busy. In fact, oftentimes, 
visual busyness will distract from it, especially the shorter the video, the more focused you want it to be, the more simple and on task. If you have something where, you know, it's a 40 minute review, okay, having a video trailer that leads in might make some sense because that's kind of priming you for content in a way that if you have five minutes and you spend a minute on the, hey, here's the lead in, uh, you're not going to be having nearly as strong an argument then because if you use most of the time. A good video will also use the visual side of video, and that's whether or not you do more than just having a camera pointed at you as you talk. You can use supplemental text. You can use gestures. You can use your expressions as part of conveying the sincerity of your argument. But whatever you choose to include, make use of the visual side. If there's nothing going on that will enhance the presentation, and the statement from seeing it, then it might as well be an audio oh, piece. So think about what will make it more impactful or more accessible or easy to follow. Now, as an example of this, talking about the references, some people, when they do the video references, they'll mention something briefly. Oh, yes, so-and-so had a statement, and then they'll put a URL, a link to that, that shows up at the bottom of the screen so they don't need to refer to the specifics more than that because they've given all the necessary details now if you're doing that you might want to use a url shortener so it's you know something that can easily be typed not a 40 character long link and something like tiny.url slash whatever it is or tiny.cc slash blah now if you're having supplemental text like you're responding to something uh great a, you could also use supplemental text you know, at the bottom of the screen to have your name, your position, or you can have uh, text that's giving the key bullet points of things that you're saying. For example, in the assignment, when you're talking about the setting, you can, by all means, introduce that verbally, but you know, enumerate those on screen with text, and that helps uh, the reader process that while still listening to what you're saying. You also don't want to rely on your viewers reading. Just flashing up a, a slide at the end that says, here are the references, is not as helpful as they're being able to know in the moment what you're referring to. You also want to avoid distractions. The distractions come in many different forms. They're visual distractions, like uh, let's say that uh, you're uh, a guy and you're presenting, and you know your hair is all mussy. It looks like you just got out of bed. You're unshaven. You, you're shirt is let's say has ketchup stains on it now this is just painting a visual example of uh, for purposes anyone can look disheveled everyone can look distracted or like they just came from something else but if you ha have those visual distractions this, a lot of times people will be focused on that more so than your message and that that is not great <laughs> because like oh, did they just run out uh, roll out of bed wait what were they talking about again so visual distractions, uh, verbal distractions, that can be a, something that is off topic, or it could be, say, if I were talking about it in this really high-pitched voice, and I don't know about you, but that kind of high-pitched voice, some people will find highly annoying, some people will find it highly abusive, and if either of those things is happening, they're paying attention to my, what I'm saying less. So whatever it you see that will make you more focused in a visual sense, in a verbal sense, and in a topical sense. So as it, let's talk about that last one. If you have wide ranging sorry, if you have wide rating digressions, if you start to talk about this and then you start saying, oh yeah, so I, I um, didn't have dinner last night. <laughs> That's just going in a whole nother direction, and unless it's something that you quickly tie into, weave into the narrative of your statement. And I'm guessing that what you had for dinner last night, or didn't have for dinner with last night, is just not key to a presentation right now on uh, what should be taught in, let's see, a presentation about positive sexual decision making. Now, if you're talking about how, say, vulnerable populations and how being on the margins of society makes you more vulnerable to making uh, more negative decisions there, well, that could have a relevance. 
But if you're not doing something like that, I'm guessing the answer is probably not. That would be a topical distraction. It's going away from. And the last thing is to say, practice. I would say always practice with the camera on because it changes how you feel about doing things. But sometimes you'll do a practice when you're like, yo, that was really good. I'm just going to keep it. And if you don't practice with the camera, it's very easy to have something that goes rather like this. Hi, I'm a uh, start re-record and to just be hitting stop and trying to do the whole thing over and over. Now, these days, if you record your presentation in several segments and edit it together, that's something that uh, most people no longer consider distracting. So that's fine. If that helps you to record it in little segments and stitch it together, fine. Uh, simple people will cover that while they'll have a you know, video transition. Uh, like a crossfade is generally smoother than having a straight cut to this new thing. And because the crossfade says, yeah, yeah, we're switching to another thing, the cut is like, well, wait, what has just happened? So practice. Practice with wearing the clothes that you will wear, uh, the shoes if you're standing up or in the place that you are. And you might find that you want to change some things because you might listen to a practice video and like, oh, I can hear my roommate in the background. Or, oh, I can hear this noise here. And then you decide, okay, I'm going to go to a room that's quiet, for example. For staying on topic, one of the best ways to do is make sure you're answering the exact prompts and to help yourself do that by making a list of talking points in the order that you're going to be discussing those talking points. You can have that on an index card in front of you. If you're recording on a laptop, you can even have the index card on the screen. Some people tape it right next to the camera on their laptop so that they'll be looking in a general direction there when they look at their notes. That's fine. I mean, politicians use teleprompters all the time. If it's good enough for the President of the United States, it's good enough for you, I imagine. And they usually will have the teleprompters placed next to the camera for the exact same reason that you might have your index card or post-it of notes right next to the camera so it looks like you're looking at the camera. <laughs> you use the phrasing from the prompt so that the specific word choices will help it make clear that you're answering that specific thing. And we'll go back to the instructions in a moment. And have a clear beginning and end. If it seems like your argument just ends abruptly, camera stops, uh -huh. did their battery run out? Did they uh, get called away and never finish? Uh, you know, Open us up, introduce the topic, and then end. A good way to end is to have a brief summary or recap of the main points of your argument. Now, if you need some ideas how to do either, watch a YouTube statement or presentation that you like. Topic doesn't really matter. But look at how do they start and how do they finish, and how do you feel about that? If it's something you like, copy it. If you don't like it, go in another direction. And by copy, I don't mean say the exact same thing, but the general ideas. Like, if they... Uh, are leading into things the same way. Uh, I'm so-and-so and I'm here to talk about this. Or they have a sign out. Uh, for example, there's a video reviewing channel called The Nostalgia Clinic. Sorry, The Nostalgia Critic. And their catchphrase that they end their presentations with, their reviews or commentaries, is always, I'm the Nostalgia Critic and I remember it. So you don't have to. And what that does is it tells the reader, oh, yes, so I'm the person who's been talking with you, we're done. And it's a nice way of bringing things to a close, just like if you watch a movie, there'll be the end. Mm. Or if you're watching a play, the lights go down or the curtain comes down. You also want to be specific. And this helps you stay on topic and make sure that you're doing all the things required. So if you're citing a supporting source, you, know, you could say, Scripture says, well, there's an awful lot of the Bible. So if you're more specific, you say John 3.16 says, okay, that'll be more specific. And so we know exactly what you're referring to, especially if you also have a supplemental visual where you put on screen the text <laughs> of that particular quote. Okay, so let's go back and look at these instructions here. Uh, so... We have the general, okay, we're going to record a video identifying elements that should be included in educational outreach strategies to adolescents regarding sexuality. And then we have these specific 
point by point. And I'd start using this for making your notes about what you're going to talk about. How might you introduce the setting? Ah, hi, I'm Basil Constantine, and, and I'm here to talk about educational outreach for, let's say, sexual violence reduction in junior high schools in Denton, Texas. So now we know the setting, we know the general population, down to the, the uh, school a subsection of public schools, and we know the geographic area, uh, and now we can talk about what those goals are. Now I've said one goal, but it should be clear that what the two required ones are. So, uh, all right. So within the general topic of sexual violence reduction, we're going to be specifically talking about uh, interpartner violence and intrapartner violence. Now these are two different things. Uh, inter means between, intra is within. So there's some people who hurt themselves doing various things. And I'm just giving this as a way of illustrating how to go from the instructions. I'm not at all saying make a presentation on this thing. And as you're introducing things, you can also just tell us the five best practices that you're going to talk about. Give us the short list. You can even show them on screen as you're reading them out. And then come back and explain why those goals and how those five elements or best practices will support your reaching those goals. And now you have an outline for where to start. You give us the short version, so you're orienting the viewer. And then you come in and you give the longer version. And this works very well if you're giving a class presentation. It works very well for a video statement because it gives people a basis for understanding and organizing the information that you give them in the more detailed version because they've seen the quick outline before. Now, as for supporting the elements and best practices with other materials, you can display citations at the bottom of the screen. You can uh, refer to things verbally. If you refer to them verbally, I would recommend also having them at the bottom of the screen or a set of references at the end. Either way, you know, if you're saying, okay, according to so-and-so's theory of development, uh, all right, well, give us a basis for seeing that exact thing. Because you said, oh, yes, and so-and-so's 1998 article titled blah, 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 that was in the important journal, pages so-and-so, and so that that's detail we do not need to be hearing. You have uh, more important things that you could be talking about in the four to five minutes of the video. So that's a great example of how you can take the keep it simple principle and the visual side of the video by having your verbal uh, remarks be more simple and focused and using the visual side to give people all the, all the information they need should they want to look at that source later without your having to read it out loud. You know, that supplemental text, you don't want to just give your whole argument on a slide and not actually read, read it out. Uh, you, you want to tell them your whole argument because that's important. That's what your video statement is about. Uh, so make sure that the text is enhancing, but it's not replacing for important things in your argument. And with those distractions, you know, you don't want to have those up all the time, just when they need it. And so you refer to something, show the, the citation for a couple seconds, take it off the screen, that's fine. With the phrasing from the prompts, well, if we look at this, two goals are identified in the rubric. So you can, when you're doing your introduction, saying, oh, my goals are number one, blah, number two, blah. And then when you come to doing the detail portion, have, oh, goal number one, colon, whatever it is, on a slide before you start talking about it in depth. And do the same thing with goal number two. And you can use a similar principle with the elements or best practices. Uh, but you know, look, make sure that you are aligning it with this. So refer to the educational outreach. Uh, tell us whether you're calling these elements or best practices. Uh, if you have something that is specifically a supportive element, call it that, and tie it back into the goal. Oh, 
uh, we're going to use this best practice which supports goal number two because blah. So and so recommended doing this, they did a study of this, or they implemented it at this school, and we're doing it at a similar school, so blah, whatever it is. Make sure that you look at places where you can make edits to make them focused. If you start the camera and it's you know 10 seconds before you're in front of it and prepared and ready to go, you can edit out those first 10 seconds at the beginning and, and start with, oh, right before you start speaking, great. That's a way that helps keep things focused and also helps you meet the time limitation here. Uh, what I do not recommend doing is making a 10 minute presentation and speeding it up to double time. Uh, I've watched some videos like that. It's a lot of people find that annoying and it's also a way of meeting the letter, but not the spirit of the rule. So, you know, <laughs> if there's something where you're like, oh, I, I took a lot of time saying that slowly and you speed it up very modestly. OK, it's usually not an issue, but uh, yeah, let's keep things naturalistic. All right. So that concludes our presentation today. If you have questions about this, feel free to send us an email at onlinewritingcenter.acu.edu to schedule an appointment if you'd like feedback on a video or a, a paper that you're working on. And you can visit the Online Writing Center for recordings of our webinars and other resources. All right. Have a great rest of the day. And by the way, if you're watching this and wondering how do you end things with a tag, that's exactly how you can do it. Bye-bye. <laughs>